Hi and welcome to Gaffey's Grinds. This is video four in our series on junior cycle science electricity. In today's video, we are going to be learning how to draw full circuits. So in the previous lesson, we looked at some of the electrical components and devices that we can find in electric circuits. And I suppose it was important that we did that before starting to draw full circuits so that we know what the pieces of the circuit look like. So we're gonna jump straight in and we're gonna take a look at uh, a, a very simple circuit, okay? So uh, don't forget what every circuit needs. So what are some of the things that every circuit's gonna need? So I want you to speak your answer to the screen now. Think of things that a circuit is going to need. So speak your answer to the screen now. Okay, so I'm hoping that you've said you're gonna need a power supply. So you're gonna need a power supply. What are the two main types of power supplies or what are the two categories of power supplies? Speak your answer to the screen now. Okay, so the two main types of power supplies are cells and mains. We're going to draw a simple circuit here using a, a cell. Okay, what else do we need? I'm hoping that you said something like, well, we need wires. We need something to carry. Uh, we need something made of metal that's got free electrons which can move and float. And then we need some kind of a device in the circuit that's going to provide a resistance. Okay, so we're gonna draw a, a very simple circuit here. We're gonna start off with a cell. So here is a single cell. So I know that this is one cell because I've only drawn one of them. Then I'm gonna get my ruler and I'm gonna use straight lines to draw my wires and you should do the same. Now don't just draw yet though, just watch, watch me while I do this and don't worry, you get your chance to practice. Okay, uh, so I'm gonna draw use my ruler to draw my wires. So these are my wires. And I generally, generally tend to draw circuits as like rectangles. We make the wires into a rectangular shape. Now they might not look like this in real life because wires don't make perfect rectangles. They tend to make more rounded edges, but it's just easier to draw them as straight lines like this. So just makes it a bit easier. So we're going to now put in a device and we'll just pick a simple device for now. We'll put it in as a lamp. So this is a simple circuit with basically wires, a single cell and one lamp. Okay. Right, so I'm gonna draw a second cell now. Uh, and this time I'm gonna do another simple circuit and so this time I'm going to have two cells. So I would do that like this. I would have my first cell here like this. And then I'm going to do a little dash line and it's connected to a second cell like that. So essentially what this does by putting two cells in is I'm doubling, doubling the potential difference of the circuit. So I'm adding extra volts to the socket, extra potential difference, which means that the Coulombs of electrons are going to have more energy. So they're going to be pushed around the socket uh, with more energy. So that's what my potential difference is going to do. And my socket again is going to be the same as the above. It's going to have one lap. That's how I would draw a simple socket that has one lamp and two cells. So I've got two cells and one lamp. Okay, now it's your turn to try. What I'd like you to do, first of all, is take down them two as examples. So pause the video, take them two down as examples now, please. I'm gonna label them. I'm gonna call this one A, and I'm gonna call this one B. Now this double cell here, two cells, do we have another word to describe that? So two cells together. I'm gonna to speak your answer to the screen on three. One, two, three. I'm hoping you said, call this a battery. So a battery is two cells connected together end on end. I've forgotten to label the wires, which are here in the second one. It's a good idea to keep everything labeled. So I've got two cells or a battery, wires and one lap. Right, you're gonna have a go at drawing these for me now, please. Okay, so what I want you to do is I want you to draw a socket with, first of all, uh, call this one C, we're gonna do three cells, one bulb. 
And we're also going to do D, we're going to do one cell, but two bulbs. And we're going to label them C and D. All right, pause the video and draw them now for me, please. Okay, so you should only be watching the video if you have paused the video and you have drawn C and D for me. Okay, I'm going to answer. I'm going to draw C first. I'm just going to rub this out so I can draw C underneath. Uh, we've got three cells and we've got one bulb. So I'm hoping that you did this. So we've got negative and positive terminal connected to a negative and positive terminal connected to a negative and positive terminal. There's my three cells. So this is three cells. So again, this is a battery with three cells. So once it's got more than two or two or more, we call it a battery, right? And then using my ruler to draw my wires and into my circuit, there is gonna be one bulb. Now the ruler on this is a little bit awkward. You'll have to forgive me. Um, there we go. It's wanting to, not wanting to do what it's told. That will have to do. It's not perfectly 90 degrees, but have to do just fine. And so there's my wires with the ruler. And then same as before, we've got a single bulb. Like that. Okay, connect that. And this is a lap. Okay. So that is wires like that, wires, three cells, and one bulb. The other one I asked you to do was one cell, two bulbs. So this is what you should have here. We've got negative and positive, we've got positive and negative terminals. Then we have our wires, straight lines with a ruler. And this is the same as the other ones, but this time we have only, or we have, sorry, we have two lamps this time. So one cell and two lamps. Like this. Oh, don't wanna do that. Okay, so. I need to leave space to draw in my two lamps like this. There's one and there's two. Now, technically you could have put this lamp, one of these lamps along the side. If you really wanted to, technically you could have done this. Nothing wrong with this. Technically that's still right. Really doesn't matter. Uh, they're still in, the, the circuit is all connected up. Just maybe a bit tidier and neater if we show them like that a bit tidier and neater okay so we've got one cell we've got wires and we've got two bulbs what we're going to say uh, we could actually label them might actually be better if we said that this is lamp one lamp one and lamp two like that. Now, remember, I asked you to label these C and D. So we're going to do C and D. Now, at this stage, if we were in school, what we would generally tend to do is we get out the little socket kits and we would actually go ahead and build these um, different sockets. Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to do that right now. But what we can do is we can use a simulation. And simulations often actually work better for stuff like this because they always work uh, and electronic stuff doesn't always work. It sometimes lets you down. Batteries are dead or the wires aren't working and you can't figure out what's wrong. Um, so sometimes uh, and simulation is, is actually better. So I'm just going to share a different screen. Yeah. Uh, Okay, now this is the simulation. It's on a website called FET. I know if it's my students are watching, you have uh, used this before. Uh, I'm gonna stick the link to the simulation in the description below this video. 
So it's very easy. Just go click the link and open this in a new tab. So make sure you have it open in a new tab. Now, uh, the key thing here is to make sure that you do things the way, uh, the way I show you to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to build the four circuits, A, B, C, and D, the ones that we just drew. Okay. And um, so that's what we're going to have a look at doing now. So as you can see here, oh, so first of all, actually, I'm going to get you to pause the video and go and get this open. Click the link in the description below and open this in a second tab. Okay, so obviously now you're going to have to flip between the video and the, um, and the simulation. The best idea here is to actually just watch me do it, then pause the video and then go and make it yourself. So I am going to show you step by step how to do it and I'll tell you when to pause and go and do it so you don't need to rush off. Now, what we're going to do, first of all, is we're going to do the very first one, which was uh, a battery or a cell, a single cell, uh, a bulb and some wires. OK, now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pull out a battery. So the battery is over here. As you see, I'm going to drag one of these out. Now, as you can see, the battery shows some blue circles with minus signs in them. So what do you think that those are on three? Speak your answer to the screen. One, two, three. OK, I'm hoping that you're saying electrons. OK, now another cool thing about this is that you can actually use this uh, over here on the right hand side of the screen. It's that you can toggle as you see what I'm doing. You can toggle between uh, the symbol view, like the symbols we learned the last day and the uh, kind of everyday view. So this is what a cell looks like and this is what its symbol is. OK, so that's the symbol and that's what it really looks like now. Uh, a couple of things to note is that some of the symbols are a little bit different than the ones we drew. And that's fine because sometimes in science you have these things where there's a couple of different versions. But don't worry, that doesn't mean the ones I taught you are wrong. They are, they are correct and they're the ones I want you to learn. For example, if we look at the light bulb, I'm going to drag out the light bulb. That symbol is a little bit different than the one we learned because ours is a circle with an X in it. But I don't want you to worry about that. It, the X is correct. Okay, so here we go. Here's a lamp. Uh, uh, we've got a filament bulb and we've got a cell. So remember our first circuit was a single cell, a single bulb and wire. So I've got to drag out the wires, connect it, and I'm going to connect it up to this left hand side circle here. I'm going to drag out another one and if we connect it to the right hand side circle like that, and you know that nothing is happening yet because the circuit is not complete. So no, the electrons in the wires in the battery are not moving. When we connect them up, they begin to move. Okay. So what I want you to do now is I want you to pause the video and I want you to go and build that socket for me. So do that now. Okay. So I'm hoping that, yeah, you welcome back. I'm hoping that you were able to build that socket pretty straightforward, pretty easy. Now I'm going to drag that off to the side here and we are going to make uh, the second one. The second one that we drew was two cells and one lap. Okay, two cells and one lap. So we're going to do that now. I'm going to show you. We just drag out a second battery. So we connect the two of them together. We've got two cells end to end. We've now got a battery pack. This is why you never really, you never get, uh, a, there's never a device at home, like a remote control or a toy that just takes one battery. They always take more than one battery. That's because two, the, each of these is a cell and we put them together, we make a battery pack or a battery. All right, so we've got a cell, two, two cells, then we've got, uh, sorry. If you need to delete Anton, you just click on it and then there should be a, like a delete button to get rid of it. I want to get rid of this guy here. Uh, come on. There you go. There's the bin down there. I need a new wire and we're going to connect it there. And then we need another bulb here. Like this. There we go. Now, straight away, I want you to notice something. Hopefully you can notice that the yellow lines here symbolize the brightness of the bulb. So as you can see, the difference between the two bulbs is the one that has the extra, uh, the one that has the extra potential difference because we've added an extra battery has a bigger brightness or a greater brightness. And this is because the electrons have more energy. You can also see this by the speed that the electrons are flowing at. So what is the measurement of the speed the electrons are flowing at? If I was measuring how many electrons are flowing past a point in a second, what would I be measuring? Speak your answer to the screen on three. One, two, three. We would be measuring the current. So hopefully you can see the link here that if we increase the voltage, we will increase the current. So more energy, the particles have more energy, they move quicker. 
Uh, on the left-hand side, they have less energy because the potential difference is lower because they've uh, one less cell and they move less quickly, which means less energy gets transferred to the surroundings. So of course our bulb on the right here is transferring more energy and that's why it's brighter. Okay, so that is, uh, that is the second cell. So what I want you to do is pause the video and go and make that one now. Okay, all right, welcome back. I hope you managed to make that one. Let's try uh, circuit C now, which as a reminder was three cells and one bulb. So I think without me making that now, you can go ahead and go to the tab first and go and make it, then come back and check. Okay, so welcome back. I hope you managed to do this. Very simple and straightforward. You get three batteries, one, two, three, three cells, one bulb, and we'll connect them up with wires. Now, there we go, and there we go. Okay, and as you can see again, the difference that it's made is that the whole thing has just got even brighter again. So you can see the uh, yellow lines are going even further this time, which symbolizes that this is even brighter again. So there's definitely a pattern here that the more, uh, the more amount of volts or the higher potential difference we have, the more energy the electrons have and the brighter the bulbs get, okay? Now, what if we take uh, the final one, which I'll remind you was one cell and two bulbs. So go ahead, go to the other tab and make that one now. Pause the video first and then go. Okay, so welcome back. And this is what you should have done. A single cell. We've got a wire. And this time we've got two bulbs. Now, you, what you needed to do probably is you needed another wire to connect the two bulbs that and then you've got your final wire to go back to the battery like that okay so that's what you should have well done if you have that you probably don't need this wire i'm just going to get rid of this wire and just connect the two bulbs together like that that will work too but it's just not as tidy so i'm just going to cut that link which you just do by clicking on it and then add in the extra wire so this is most similar i suppose to the very first one so the one on the far left so we've got, this time we've got one cell. So if we compare both of these ones that have one cell. Oh, I don't want to do that. Cut that. Oops. If we compare both of these because they both have one cell and we see the difference that it's made when we look at the bulbs. When we put the second bulb in, we now have a lot lower brightness for each bulb. They're both still lit. They're both still transferring energy to the surroundings, but they're transferring less energy. It kind of looks like the energy that's there in the first circuit is split between the two bulbs in the second circuit. I would estimate them to be around half of the brightness of the one in the first uh, in the one in the first circuit. So the voltage or the energy, if you think of the voltage, the potential difference as the energy that the electrons are carrying, it's been split between the two bulbs. So they get about half as much brightness as the one bulb gets in the first circuit. All right, so you're spotting a lot of important patterns here, which we're going to come back to in future videos, but I just want you to spot the general patterns for now. So the general patterns here are that more batteries, higher potential difference means more brightness. Also, if we split the potential difference by adding more devices, like more bulbs or more anything that's going to uh, slow down the current and transfer energy, then you've got... Uh, a smaller brightness in this case, okay? All right, so I'm going to go back to uh, the OneNote screen now, and we are going to do some practice questions on those. So if you just bear with me for a second, I'm just gonna transfer back to the OneNote page. Okay, so it's time to do some practice on your keywords. So what I want you guys to do is I want you to pause the video in a second, and I want you to write out the full sentences you see here, but fill in the blanks. So fill in the blanks with some keywords that we've learned today and in the previous lessons. So do that now, pause the video and fill in the blanks. Okay, so you should only be watching now if you have paused the videos and you have filled in the keywords. Okay, so uh, first of all, I'm hoping for the first one you wrote that increasing the number of cells in a circuit will increase the something. Now it did increase the brightness of the bulbs 
Okay, so when we put more batteries in, it increased the brightness of the bulbs. But I don't think that's going to work here because we're looking for two words. So brightness is not going to fill the two words. So what else could it be? So more batteries increases what? So what uh, idea to do with circuits have we increased? That might be two words. I'm hoping that some people caught that we meant potential difference. So increasing the number of cells in a circuit increases the potential difference. For more batteries, more potential difference. If there are more cells, the brightness of a bulb, what does it do? Well, it increases. You could have also wrote, uh, gets brighter. That wouldn't be one word. So the brightness of a bulb increases. Well done if you said that. This is because the coulombs of electricity have more what? Well, they have more energy. So the coulombs of electricity are flowing quicker because they've got more energy. And that increases the brightness of the bulb because more energy gets transferred uh, by the bulb to the surroundings. Well done if you got that right. If more bulbs are added to the circuit, the brightness of the bulbs, well, what happens here? Well, I add more bulbs. That was like the very last one I did. I remember what happened. The brightness decreased. So more bulbs, the potential difference seems to get split or the energy that's getting transferred is split between the two bulbs. So it's not all belonging to one bulb anymore. It's split equally between the two bulbs. This is because each bulb transfers a share of something carried by the coulombs of electrons. Well, that's easy. That one is energy. So it's energy is the thing that's carried by the coulombs of electrons. So this is because each bulb transfers a share of the energy carried by the coulombs of electrons. Uh, Okay, so that is uh, the keywords. Uh, I also now have some questions for you guys to do. So what I would like you to do, this is more, some of these are more retrieval questions from previous videos, but they're really important because they do link to what we're talking about today. So I want you to pause the video and I want you to try and answer those from memory, please. So no peeking, no looking back at the previous stuff. It's much better if you try and do this from memory. Do that now, pause the video, please. Okay, I'm hoping that a lot of that was pretty much revision of stuff that you should have kind of concretely in your mind at this stage. So I'm going to show the answers now. So remember, you should only be listening to my voice if you've tried to do all of them questions. It's time to get your red pen and correct them now. So here are the answers. Just going to get rid of the ruler. Okay, a couple of spelling mistakes there, I see. Sorry, number two. Okay. Uh, just move that out of the way so that you guys can see the answer to number five. Ah, come on. There we go, make that smaller. Oh, sugar. Right, there we go. Number one to five, or one to nine, sorry, correcting them. Good. And the last thing I would like you to do is we're gonna take a look at a few more just to make sure you really understand and you practice doing what we did today. Okay, so first thing I want to do, question one is draw a circuit with three cells and two lamps. So pause the video and do that now. Okay, so this is what you should have. Three cells like this, there's one, there's two, and there's a third one. No, that last one is wrong. There we go. Like that. We then have. Now you see this is not as tidy when you don't use a ruler. So we've got three cells and we've got one, two lamps like that. Okay. You should re it's much better to use a ruler. Next one says add a closed switch to your diagram between the cells and the lamps. Add a close switch to your diagram between the cells and the lamps. Now, if you know what you're doing here, if you're confident with that, now the first thing you need to do is try and remember what the symbol for a closed switch is. If you remember what the symbol is and you're pretty sure where you should draw it, go ahead and do that now. If not, I am going to show you how to do it. So if you're confident, pause the video, go ahead and do it. If not, I'm going to do it in a second and you can watch me doing it. Okay. Now I'm going to redraw this socket I have up here. Actually, do you know what? I'm not going to redraw it. I'm going to stick it in here. I'm just going to rub out part of that 
So I'm going to put it in. It says to put it in between the cells and the lamps. So this is what we should be doing. Well, the switch has two circles on the end. So I'm going to show it here. It's where there could be a break in the socket. And it says draw a closed switch. So if the switch is closed, then the two things are connected like that. So here, this is a switch. Uh, lamp one, lamp two, and three cells. These are the wires. So that I have successfully put in a switch in between the cells and the lamps. I could have also put the switch in over here. Uh, or I could have put it in here. It really makes no difference where you put it so long as you draw it in the socket. And it's, it asks you specifically to put it between the lamp and the cells, or the lamps and the cells. So that would be it with the switch added, the closed switch. All right. Draw a new socket with one cell and two lamps. Go ahead and do that now. Pause the video and do that. Okay, so one cell. You should only be watching the video if you have done this. So here's one cell, two lamps. Like this is lamp one. There's lamp two. And there it is connected up. Lamp one, lamp two, wires, and cell, one cell. Add a close switch between the two lamps. So it's specifically telling you where to put it here. So go ahead and add the close switch between the two lamps now. Now, if you're lucky enough and you drew in pencil, you can just rub it out. If you're not, just draw it again. It's no big deal. So we've got lamp one. We've got cell one, sorry, one cell. This time I'm going to leave a bit more space. Here's lamp one. And I need to put a switch in here. So here is my switch. And it needs to be a closed switch. So I'm drawing two circles with, sorry, the switch closed. So the connection between them is connecting like that. Then I'm drawing lamp two like that. And then the wire connects back to the battery. All right. Now, again, it's better if you do them with a ruler. But for the sake of time here, I'm just doing them a bit quicker. You guys, easier for you guys to use a ruler on paper. Now, question five. If that switch is open, do both lamps turn off or just one and explain your answer? So what, if, you, if you're confident you can answer that, then go ahead and uh, have a go at it now. Okay. If you weren't confident about it, then I'm going to give you some little tips or clues here. If I open this switch, which basically means I draw it like this, The switch is now open. This is an open switch. The question is, do both lamps turn off or just one? Well, both lamps rely on the socket to be fully uh, completed. And in this case, it really doesn't matter that the current, if the current is coming this way around the socket, it's getting to this bulb. But if the current, the current goes and it can't go any further, then it can't get back to the battery to complete the socket. So it really doesn't matter that the current might be getting to the bulb before the switch. It's still not gonna flow all the way around the socket. And if it's not flowing, then the, bat the bulb isn't gonna light up. So it's only gonna flow if it can pass all the way around the socket back to the beginning. Okay. It's the same as if the current travels this way. It gets as far as that bulb, but then it stops there and it cannot go all the way back. This cannot happen there because of the break in the socket. So the answer here is it really doesn't matter that the fact that it's between the bulbs, it doesn't matter where the switch is. If the switch is open in this particular socket, then it breaks the socket. So if a switch breaks the socket and means that it's not complete, and that's what this shows, there's a gap here. So not complete socket is not complete anymore. If the socket is not complete, then current will not flow and no bulbs will light up. So if the switch is open, do both lamps turn off or just one? The answer is both will turn off. Okay, so both is the answer, but it does also ask you to explain your answer. So both is not, that's not the end of the answer here. So this is where I'm reading my answer. 
check in my question. It says, explain your answer, and I have not done that yet. Both. Well, to explain the answer, I would say opening the switch. Breaks the circuit for both bulbs. This means no current can flow. Now, if no current can flow, then it really doesn't matter which bulb you're talking about. No current is flowing, neither bulb is going to light up. Okay. All right, that's the end of this video. Uh, you now know how to draw simple circuits. And um, of course, we could swap out, just a quick note maybe, we could also swap out, it doesn't have to be a bulb. We could put other devices in here as well. For example, we could have an M, a motor, M for motor. So that's all we do, we'd swap out the symbols. Uh, we might have, instead of a lamp, we might have an LED. And if you think about, remember what an LED is, uh, a light emitting diode, then it's got a triangle with a line and then it keeps going. And then it's got two little arrows that point up out of the top right hand corner. This would be an LED. Okay, we might also put a resistor into the socket somewhere here. Put a resistor in and so on. So you literally just put in the symbols uh, into the socket, whatever uh, you whatever it asks to include. And of course, this is all on paper, but real circuits actually get built like this. So just like we did with the simulation, if a circuit says shows you one bulb and two cells, then you literally put those into place and connect them up in real life. Uh, again, when we go back to school, we will actually practice uh, building some of these. But uh, this is actually a bit tidier, a, a way of learning about it anyway. And then we can build real cells when we're back in school. Okay, guys, well, that is the end of today's video on learning how to draw sockets. Uh, I will see you in the next one.